in concert, tales of that that you are not getting from your mainstream media because they would never tell you everything. We we all know that. Um, I will also be bringing you that the UN has just voted for a ceasefire. Uh, and, and, and what, what does that mean? And the U S abstained from the vote. The U S couldn't possibly vote to end the U S back genocide, but they did abstain. And we'll talk about what that means and why, as well as many other stories coming to you right now live. So please share this, please hit thumbs up, please hit subscribe and let's do this. I choose to start these off in like a monster truck rally. So Okay, so major attack, as you know, in uh, in Russia. Um, I'll I'll bring you the CNN uh, version of events first, and then we'll get to the stuff that CNN would never tell you. Um, four suspects in the Crocus City Hall attack, which left at least 137 people dead in Moscow, have been charged with committing a terrorist act. They are facing possible life imprisonment. Why life and not facing possible execution? Because other countries aren't as morally bankrupt as the United States. And they realize that if they execute people, then they're morally at the same level as the people they're executing. They're uh, killing people who are killers. So, you know, other countries, they, they don't actually have that as a possibility. They they uh, they understand that that makes them morally bankrupt. But anyway, very small side note. Uh, here's continuing from CNN. Here's what we know about ISIS-K, the group linked to the Moscow concert hall terror attack. And have you noticed that... Uh, Every time the U.S. or the, the Western interests or whatever need a new group, they just tack on a new letter and you're like, I've never heard of ISIS. Is it a serial ISIS special K? Is it what? ISIS K? It, it, whenever they need, they're like, oh, new bad guy. ISIS um, Expedia just uh, popped up and oh, OK. Anyway, they always have one ready to go when they need it, a new terror group. but. CNN says ISIS, as, uh, uh, also known as Islamic State Group, claimed responsibility for Friday's deadly assault on the concert venue in Moscow. And by the way, to put this assault into perspective, the, the, the most deadly mass shooting that the U.S. has ever had was around 60 people killed. Uh, I believe that was the Las Vegas shooting. And, and this is 137 people dead. It, it is uh, a truly uh, just cataclysmic horror show. ISIS-K was formed in 2015 and has been active in Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iran. It's a branch of ISIS. The terror groups, kind of like a franchise location, you know, like when you get an Olive Garden in your area and you're like, oh, that's Olive Garden K. It's pretty similar to that. Five years since the fall of ISIS' self-proclaimed caliphate across Iraq and Syria, the group has morphed into a terror network with cells spread around the world, including in Africa, the Middle East, Central Asia, and Southeast Asia. That's funny, because I thought we were told by various people in the U.S. government that ISIS was done, that we beat them, that they were gone. Everyone from Donald Trump on down said ISIS is all finished. We beat them. We won. And uh, apparently by winning, it meant spreading them around the entire world, as CNN just told you. Uh, interesting. That's that's uh, quite, a, quite, a, quite a different take on it. We won by spreading them around the world. Uh, one more thing here from CNN. ISIS has a longstanding animosity against Russia and Putin. Several experts told CNN Russia has been at the top or near the top of the list of, uh, of ISIS for many years. So that's what CNN's saying, but many people are pointing a finger in the direction of, you might have guessed it, good old United States. And I'm going to bring you some evidence of that, but also leave it open to interpretation. I don't think we know the exact answer of who's to blame for this, what exactly happened, but I'm going to bring you information and 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 let you let you make up your own mind. Um this is just to just to give you a little teaser here of of some of what the United States have been saying. This is from good old Victoria Newland, who you guys know is the Queen of Death. Who uh, she just resigned her post a couple of weeks ago, and this is before she resigned her post, but this is still in 2024. Um, and she's talking about sending money to the proxy war that she helped create in Ukraine. She's a big, you know, she, she's the queen of the proxy war in Ukraine. That's That's been her big project. 
that's been her main her main thing. And here's what she had to say just a few weeks ago. Most effective on the battlefield. And as I said in Kyiv three weeks ago, this supplemental funding will ensure Putin faces some nasty surprises on the battlefield this year. Nasty surprises. Well, boy, uh, an attack on a concert hall outside Moscow that uh, kills 137 people. That sounds like a nasty surprise, doesn't it? But that alone does not mean the U.S. was definitely behind this. Um, But let me bring you some more information about ISIS-K and who exactly is responsible. Um, Here is the, the, this is a Wikipedia entry. So this is the Wikipedia is the liberal view of the world, right? It is not going to give you the, the, the truly the, the hidden stuff, but it's going to give you kind of a, a surface level of, of reality. And this is the head of ISIS K uh, Shahab al Mahajir. And again, this is Wikipedia. This is not some edgy uh, little little blog on the outskirts of the internet. And they say he worked as a subcontractor of a security company and frequented Bagram Airfield, the U.S. airfield, right? Uh, this, this is just Wikipedia again. Uh, frequented Bagram Airfield, worked with uh, a subcontractor of a security company, Afghan journalist Bilal Sawari reports that Ghaffari was a special guard of then first vice presidents, Dostum and Saleh, and uh, those were U.S.-backed vice presidents. So uh, this shows him working extensively with the U.S., I mean, at least to some degree, U.S. contractors, uh, U.S.-backed vice presidents, and and then uh, apparently he also worked uh, oh yeah, with with Salah, which is what I just said, uh, Amrullah Salah, uh, who was chief of the NDS, which is the Afghanistan when it was when Afghanistan was had a U.S. backed government. Uh, NDS was the intelligence agency in Afghanistan, so he was working for basically the head of the intelligence agency in Afghanistan when it was U.S. backed, and some people have called the NDS uh, and Salah the the CIA's right hand man in Afghanistan. So this guy who is or was recently the head of uh, uh, ISIS-K is, has a lot of connections to the U S and the CIA in in various ways. So there's that, you know, something CNN for some reason failed to mention, but so, so that's bringing you the possibility that, uh, ISIS K doing one of these attacks, doing a, a monstrous attack like this, could actually yes, it could be ISIS, but it could also be the U.S. working through ISIS. Those those things can go together, or MI6 working through ISIS, or Israel working through ISIS, because they're all part of the U.S. empire. So you've got all these tentacles that uh, do things with ISIS. And some of you may be like your head spinning. You're going ISIS. I thought they were just our bad guys. I thought we just fought against them. I thought we just hated ISIS. What do you mean we work with ISIS? And there are many examples of how the U.S. is connected to ISIS. This is from Business Insider in 2015. Uh, not a not an edgy outlet. Again, uh, I just like to point out I'm not just bringing you the 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 edgy outlets willing to cover this. This is a standard. Mainstream outlet, one of ISIS's top commanders was a star pupil of U.S. Special Forces training in the country of Georgia. So here you have top commander of ISIS, former star pupil of the United States. Uh, And a lot of these things, I don't know about that one specifically, but a lot of this stuff, uh, Max Blumenthal wrote a whole book about called The Management of Savagery, all the connections between the U.S. and these various uh, jihadists and militant fighters. Um, Here is a a Guardian article. Again, mainstream outlet. Guardian article from eight years ago, and it's titled, Now the Truth Emerges, How the U.S. Fueled the Rise of ISIS in Syria and Iraq. On Monday, the trial uh, 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 in London of a Swedish man uh, Berlin Gildo, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right, accused of terrorism in Syria, 
collapsed. The trial collapsed. Not he didn't collapse, but I mean, he may have collapsed. But this is about how the trial collapsed. After it became clear that British intelligence had been arming the same rebel groups the defendant was charged with supporting. So British intelligence, of course, working at the at the behest or at least in the agreement with the U.S. government, uh, were doing the same thing as this guy that he was being prosecuted for. MI6 had cooperated with the CIA on the rat line of arms transfers. And this, again, from an article from eight years ago, a recently declassified secret U.S. intelligence report written in August 2012, which uncannily predicts and effectively welcomes the prospect of Salafist principality in eastern Syria and an al-Qaeda-controlled Islamic state in Syria and Iraq. And so it's welcoming. This is a U.S. intelligence report that wants an al-Qaeda-controlled Islamic state in Syria and Iraq from 2012. In stark contrast to Western claims at the time, the Defense Intelligence Agency document identifies al-Qaeda in Iraq, which became ISIS, and fellow uh, Salafists as the major forces driving the insurgency in Syria, and states that Western countries, the Gulf states and Turkey, were supporting the opposition's efforts to take control of eastern Syria. So again and again, and I've just brought you, what, two, three articles, the two of them very mainstream outlets showing you how the U.S. funded, armed, furthered ISIS, wanted ISIS, built ISIS in various ways in order to fight in, uh, in Syria and Iraq. But on top of that, the U.S. always needs a big, bad terrorist group to fight against in order to continue to dump literally trillions of dollars, if you count our entire military budget, into these games. Uh, trillions of dollars have to be funneled into this. And if you don't have a bad guy, if you don't have a big evil ISIS to send that money, uh, you know, to spend that money fighting, then how are you going to justify that to the world, to the American people? So instead, they always have these these big baddies that they're willing to dump all this money into. And even though these leaked reports, I mean, that's the thing. These leaked reports come out revealing all this stuff. And then people, people, the average Americans, but also all your mainstream media, then just move on and ignore it all. Or they cover it for a minute and then act like it never exists again. I mean, CNN may be covering ISIS-K for the attack on Moscow, but they're not fucking mentioning these Guardian articles, the declassified memos. But the U.S. Uh, has funded and armed so many of these groups in order to keep instability, in order to keep war going, in order to keep uh, instability in Syria or Iraq or, you know, example after example. And here is... This is from 2016, the L.A. Times. In Syria, militias armed by the Pentagon fight those armed by the CIA. So talk about keeping instability, keeping conflict. Uh, we were funding both sides of various conflicts. We also were funding and arming the Taliban as we were fighting the Taliban in Afghanistan. Uh, you know, they, they would, for example, and th this was in mainstream outlets again, that then you, it, basically men in black neuralizers come down and neuralize all of mainstream media after they cover these things. So the LA Times or something will do this report and then bloop, neuralize, never mentioned again. I'm sure the LA Times right now as they're covering the attack in Moscow is not saying, uh, you know, not mentioning this article showing that the U.S., funds and arms these groups and then goes, oh my God, look what ISIS K did. Oh my God, look what what look what ISIS Kellogg cereal did over in Moscow. Oh wow. So yeah, so they're all neuralized and they all forget it. But you you have like kind of two options of what to believe as to what just went down in Moscow. Neither of them looks good to the US. Uh, neither of them. And the two options are these. One is that the U.S. actually put, uh, you know, paid people, put through various intermediaries, put ISIS-K or whatever the hell up to this. Uh, 
and and wanted it to happen in order to uh, destabilize Russia, but also in order to get Russia uh, uh, fighting with with allies as well. And in fact, I haven't brought you that story yet. So let me bring that to you now. Uh, here's Business Insider, again, mainstream outlet, uh, saying that the Moscow terror attack could drive a wedge between Russia and one of its longtime allies, Tajikistan. Oh, wow, Business Insider, you sure are eager to drive wedges between Russia and their allies. Sure are eager to blame one of Russia's allies for this attack. But anyway, so get back to the back to the two things we could believe right now that and and both I'd say are possibilities uh, from the evidence I've seen but maybe someone has more evidence but the evidence I've seen two things are possibilities one is US absolutely CIA fingers on this put these people up to it the other which is slightly more favorable to the United States but still not good is that ISIS K or whatever the hell did this all on their own and with no input from the US but still, ISIS in general, including ISIS K through G plus P and Z, would not exist without the U.S. doing the U.S. shit. Without us going into the Middle East and destroying these countries and destroying Iraq and sending everybody off into the hinterlands with their guns and, and destroy helping to destroy Syria. And without the U.S., funding and arming these groups, even if it was year, even if it was five years ago and they, Hey, we have an armed ISIS K and a, it's gotta be three weeks. Now we have nothing to do with them. Even if that's the case, you still helped create, build up these people that did this attack apparently. So those are your two options. And I don't think your mainstream media is giving you those two options, right? They're, they're just saying, the U.S. nothing to do with this. It's like, either way, either U.S. actually planning it, like Victoria Nuland saying, we got some big surprises coming down the pike for Russia, or you have uh, just that the U.S. didn't plan this, but, oh, yeah, and I, I forgot to mention uh, that the U.S., many have talked about the fact that the U.S. warned uh, U.S. citizens in Russia to not go to concert venues. Uh, here's the quote. The embassy is monitoring reports that extremists have uh, immediate plans to target large gatherings in Moscow to include concerts and U.S. citizens should be advised to avoid large gatherings over the next 48 hours. They stated that in Mar on March 7th, so uh, less than 20 days ago. The, uh, ISIS claimed responsibility for the attack. When they put out that report, when the U.S. put out that re report saying, beware American citizens, concert halls, etc., uh, Russian President Putin dismissed the U.S. warnings as, quote, blackmail just days before the attack. Putin said, quote, all this resembles outright blackmail and the intention to intimidate and destabilize our society. So that happened before the attack. The U.S. was warning Americans not to go to concert halls. Now, some people are pointing to that and saying, see, the U.S. did it. If the U.S. didn't do it, why would they put out that warning before it happened? But I actually think that here's the thing. The U.S. doesn't actually care about American citizens like at all, at all, at all. So I don't actually think the U.S. government would care if U.S. citizens uh, got hit in a concert attack that much. So if the U.S. was planning something like this, it actually seems to me unlikely they would put out that type of report saying, beware, about to happen. Um so I actually don't think that just points to the United States. But like I said, even if the U.S. didn't uh, put these guys up to this specifically, they helped create ISIS. Like, they, 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 there are countless articles you can go read right now about how important the U.S. was and is in the rise of ISIS, in the now apparently in the making ISIS uh, something that's around the world. Uh, it, 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 yeah. It's all there. It's all there for the finding. But instead, your mainstream media ignores all of this and just says, ISIS K, those bastards. That's all they do. And, uh, and you know, of course, then also tries to foment uh, rifts with Russia, tries to destabilize Russia in a myriad ways. Um, okay, so I am also bringing to you in just a moment 
Uh, news on the UN voting for a ceasefire, other updates on Israel's special genocide operation, which is now in day 171, 170 days. We are almost at the half a year mark of Israel committing genocide on the Palestinian people. We are almost at a half a year of this fucking horror show. And yet it, it, it's just, it, it continues. It just continues. It just keeps going. It just keeps going. Israel is monstrous uh, to continue this genocide. 32,333 Palestinians have been killed and 74,694 wounded, but that does not count those lost underneath the rubble. So really we're likely over 40,000 people murdered in half a year. Uh, I'm going to bring you more updates on that, but I wanted to bring you an update on Julian Assange real quick. By the way, everyone, please hit thumbs up, hit share, uh, let people know about this. I'd love for you to throw in some super chats, whether you're watching this live or taped. I know a few thousand of you will watch this live, but tens of thousands of you will watch this later. Uh, please hit the thanks button. If you're not watching it live, if you're watching it live, you can hit the super chat button. Uh, so there, there's a way to, to, to donate and support the show live or not live. Um, the, on, on YouTube, it's a, like a dollar sign, a heart on it or something. Anyway, thank you so much, um, for all the super chats and all the support and everything. We are growing this channel despite all of the suppression and all of the, all of the efforts to stop this channel from growing, to stop my stuff from growing, to cancel my career. Uh, I am the most censored comedian commentator in America. If you add it all up and, uh, but thank you guys for making sure this is still here. And can you uh, 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 please hit thumbs up and share and those good things? I do these four days a week. So even if you don't get the alerts, just show up Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. Oh, and tomorrow, Chris Hedges. Chris Hedges should be here tomorrow. I always throw in a should because, you know, it's when you're doing live things, people get confused time zones and all kinds of crazy crap. So 90% chance Chris Hedges here tomorrow. Um, all right. Let's get an update on Julian Assange, that could be big. I was skeptical of this at first, but now we do have confirmation from Consortium News, which has been amazing on the Assange topic. They cover it all the time. And uh, so it's about a week ago, the Wall Street Journal put out a report saying that Assange's lawyers are engaged in a deal with the U.S. government that could set the imprisoned publisher free. Now, when the Wall Street Journal put that out, Julian Assange's lawyers said that they didn't that there was no evidence of that. And so I was very skeptical. Wall Street Journal, far right wing garbage outlet. So I was very skeptical. However, this article from Consortium says that Consortium News has learned this off the record as well, which is some verification that is not Wall Street Journal. So that is good news. Lawyers for Julian Assange and officials of the U.S. Justice Department are engaged in talks for a possible plea deal that could set us, could see Assange walk out of Belmarsh Prison in London as a free man, according to a report Wednesday in the Washington Journal. The newspaper said the DOJ was considering whether to allow Assange to plead guilty to a reduced charge of mishandling classified information, which is a misdemeanor, which would mean he's been tortured for 10 years for a misdemeanor, even if that were true. However, even that is garbage. But still, I would very much want him to take the plea deal because I do not want to see uh, such a hero die in prison. And what they've done to him is just just egregious on so many levels. It is the U.S. empire just exerting their wrath on someone who brought you and me the truth. We learned the truth from him and they're still reeling from it. They're still furious that we know of their crimes. Uh, to continue from the article, he is currently charged with felonies for allegedly violating the U.S. Espionage Act, which you can't violate the U.S. Espionage Act if you're not an American or functioning in America. You cannot violate the U.S. Espionage Act if you are from another country, in another country, not a U.S. corporation, not connected to the U.S. in any way, because saying that you could violate the U.S. Espionage Act means that U.S. laws apply to everybody in the world. Everybody. Anybody in the world. You have to abide by U.S. laws at all times, including lost tribes in the Amazon. 
never, never had contact with a single human outside of their tribe deep in the Amazon. They have to abide by U.S. laws. If they were to, if they were to, uh, you know, reveal uh, reveal U.S. war crimes, then they'd uh, they'd be arrested on the espionage. Maybe they could even be arrested for loitering. You know, the U.S. a lot of cities have no loitering uh, laws on the books. So uh, one of those lost tribes is hanging out by a tree. They get arrested by U.S. cops for loitering by that tree deep in the Amazon. Anyway, uh, for allegedly violating U.S. Espionage Act and for conspiracy to commit computer intrusion charges that carry as much as 175 years in prison. And this deal, him taking the plea deal, could see Assange eventually walk free if the five years he has already spent in London's Belmarsh prison is counted as time served. So it's been five years in Belmarsh prison and it's been, hey, Chris, thank you for the donation. You rock, love you. Also, thank you. Swedenias over on Rumble for the the ten dollars says war is scary and a brutal monster. You guys are heroes. Thank you so much. Um. Uh, oh, and I missed one as well. Thank you so much, Cam. Thirty five box of special K for the next operation. So, uh, that that you know he's five years in Belmarsh tortured. Also, five, also. I thought it was more like seven, maybe it was close to six uh, in the Ecuadorian embassy, basically one room in the Ecuadorian embassy that he couldn't leave because they were going to arrest him and put him in Belmarsh, which they ultimately did. Without elaborating, the paper, the Wall Street Journal added that, quote, U.S. prosecutors face diminishing odds that Julian Assange would serve much more time even if he were convicted stateside. Now, so, so Wall Street Journal didn't uh, elaborate on that, which it seems ridiculous. If the if he were to land stateside, the U.S. would lock him up forever. There is no doubt about that. So the idea that he wouldn't serve much more is like so stupid. But that's right wing idiocy from Wall Street Journal. Barry Pollack, Assange's U.S. lawyer, told Consortium News, "We have been given no indication that the Justice Department intends to resolve." the case. So you, so Assange's lawyers continue to say, this is not happening. There is no plea deal, but consortium is saying they verified this. So you now have at least two sources, Wall Street Journal and consortium news saying this is the case. Um, and they make the point consortium, Joe Laria at the consortium news makes the point. If one side is unhappy in a negotiation, they might very well say that the other side has no intention of resolving the case, meaning if Assange's lawyers do not like the look of this plea deal, they may be saying publicly that this is not resolved because it doesn't look resolved to them. So, but still could be very good news. Like I said, uh, you know, I, I'm sure there are people out there that go, don't take the plea deal. Screw the U.S. government. They've been torturing you for years. You did nothing wrong. You're just the messenger. They're shooting the messenger. They tried to, they had plans to assassinate you. They had plans to kidnap you, which they ultimately did. They, they, they are a horror show of just moral bankruptcy and screw them. I hope they go diddle themselves with a rusty fracking pipe. And you may say that, but here's the thing. You're not the one being tortured in Belmarsh prison. So simply from a, I want Assange to have a few years left in his life that's not in prison, I would say take the plea deal uh, if this is a real thing that's out there. He has suffered enough and, and yeah, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Now, if they give him some kind of fake plea deal, which he very well is smart enough to turn down where he thinks he's pleading to get out early and then they lock him up forever anyway, that's a different thing. But anyway, wanted to bring you that update on Julian Assange. And, you know, our mainstream media is covering, they, they, they did some light coverage of this story. But of course, they don't mention that the U.S. is the country that plotted, the U.S. CIA plotted to assassinate Assange. They plotted to kidnap Assange. Uh, and they also, Assange has no connection to the United States. Not a citizen didn't work here. Uh, so never lived here. So it's ridiculous for, I mean, perhaps the number one thing, last point, oh, 
fifth point, perhaps the number one thing that your mainstream media should care about, other than the fact that the, one of their colleagues is being tortured for doing their job better than they ever could, other than that, the biggest thing your mainstream media should care about is if this goes through, if Assange is prosecuted in the U.S. and locked up in the U.S., it means anybody in the world is supposed to abide by U.S. laws. That's pure insanity. Pure insanity for the entire world to be under the wrath of U.S. laws. Okay, moving on. Please, everybody, hit share, hit thumbs up. Uh, always fighting this press, and, and and thank you so much for the Super Chats for helping keep this show going. And I'll do my best to answer Super Chats uh, soon after they are thrown in there. But anyway, the UN Security Council, Day 171 of Israel's special genocide operation, uh, murdering children uh, endlessly at a rate that has never been seen in modern war, not in the past few decades. 43, 45% of all those being murdered are children. In average modern warfare, you're talking like 6%, 8% maybe of children murdered. And Israel is it, lapping that in terms of their brutality and their disgusting, disgusting genocide operation. And uh, one of the, I'm not going to show the video, it's too horrific, but one of the videos has leaked of the IDF murdering four, four men, four average men walking in an open area in Gaza, just walking along, and a drone bomb comes and murders all four uh, for no reason. And then the IDF said, oh, that was a mistake. But imagine how many, imagine how many it would be uh, if we saw all their videos, if we saw all the IDF uh, videos. Uh, anyway, tensions between the U.S. and Israel were exposed on Monday when Washington stood aside and allowed the U.N. Security Council to pass a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. The U.S. decision to abstain on the vote prompted Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to cancel a second, sorry, a scheduled trip to the U.S. by two of his top advisors. Oh, are you guys as torn up as I am? Netanyahu's not coming to town? Come on. That means I got to throw away all my Netanyahu shirts I bought to stand at the side of the parade and the big foam number one hands. Man, no Netanyahu coming to town. The U.S. decision to abstain on the vote prompt, uh, did that it would put forward a ceasefire resolution tied to the release of hostages. That resolution fell when it was vetoed by Russia and China. Oh, sorry. The, the earlier resolution uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, maybe it happened on Saturday or something or Friday later, and I didn't cover it on the live stream that a resolution was put forward and actually Russia and China vetoed it for a ceasefire. Why did they veto it? Because it very clearly had enough loopholes to allow Israel to attack Rafa which they've started doing, by the way. Two million, roughly, 1.9 million Palestinians are crowded into one city in Gaza because they've been sent there as like the safe zone. So Israel is now preparing and maybe has dropped some bombs on Rafa, the place that everybody has gone to to try and be safe. Uh, of course, then there's also the famine killing uh, thousands now, and it, it'll just get worse. But... um. So, so Russia and China vetoed the ceasefire, that ceasefire, because it was bullshit. It was not a ceasefire. It was, a, it was full of loopholes allowing Israel to continue their genocide operation. And by the way, whenever they mention hostages, oh, yeah, all the hostages need to be free. They need to free the hostages. You notice they only talk about the hostages Hamas is holding, which is 100, whatever, 60, 30, I can't remember. But uh, they only talk about that. They never talk about the hostages that Israel is holding, which is like 10,000. There are 10,000 Palestinians or more. It may actually be 15,000. I don't know. The numbers get spotty after October 7th. But 10,000 uh, Palestinians, Palestinian hostages in Israel's prisons and never mentioned. Never mentioned by mainstream media. Never mentioned by anyone. Just keep it quiet on those but always talk about the 130 that Hamas has. Uh, the, this latest resolution put forward by the 10 non-member states, so, yeah, non-state members, non-permanent members of the Security Council demands an immediate ceasefire for the month of Ramadan. 
the immediate and unconditional release of hostages and the urgent need to expand the flow of aid into Gaza, which is being stopped by Israel. While resolutions made by the UN Security Council are legally binding under international law, but we know Israel does not care about international law because they have violated every international law that exists, they can be and have been in the past ignored, UN Security Council uh, resolutions. Ignored as the UN enforcement mechanisms are limited. Basically, the UN has no way to make Israel do this. They just say, do it. They like the extent of their enforcement ability is to like keep calling them on like speed dial and be like, please, please, please. That's about it. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said a failure to implement the resolution would be unforgivable. Uh, Straight up, straight up genocide, folks, by the dictionary definition of genocide. Dictionary. And I want to point out that we protesters, those of you fighting back and demanding this be called a genocide, that people talk about it as a genocide, that people uh, are be critical of Israel for this genocide, we are having an impact in so many ways. I mean, I've brought you some of them from, the, from Israel's uh, uh, approval ratings or whatever you call them, being a tanking, etc. But even people like AOC, Ocasio Cortez, are now coming around. Just recently, she, by the way, so she's said things about Palestinians deserve rights and things, but she would never say the word genocide. She was always cagey, cagey on ethnic cleansing, etc. But she was chased out of a movie theater recently by protesters saying, "Why won't you call this a genocide?" And I think that played probably no small part in what we now see from her. If you want to know what an unfolding genocide looks like, open your eyes. It looks like the forced famine of 1.1 million innocents. We must write our story in this moment of what it means and who we are as Americans. And our story must be not that we were good men who did nothing. Now, clearly not enough aid is getting in. Clearly the condition. <laughs> okay. So two things I want to say. I'll, I'll play his, his garbage and say it. Two things I want to say. One is, yeah, those of you saying uh, too little, too late, you know, it took her 170 days to call this a, a genocide. Forget her. Totally understand. Fine by me. Uh, I'm not asking you to become some kind of uh, uh, member of the AOC fan club. But I do think those of us who are fighting for this to be called what it is, for it to be talked about this way, do need to accept the wins when we get them as activists. You know, for example, when you fight against a pipeline and it delays the pipeline for a day or sometimes a month, or they have to get more clearances or their, their insurance drops them, and then that oil company has to find new insurance for the pipeline, you should still enjoy that win and talk about that win and 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 cheer that win, even if. It didn't stop the pipeline. Well, I mean, sometimes it does, but a lot, 99% of the time it doesn't. But you delayed their work and you made it more difficult for them to destroy our futures. And so these wins need to be appreciated and, uh, and, and talked about and celebrated for a very short time and then back to work. So I'm not saying get on the AOC fan club. I am saying appreciate the win that, pro, that, that protesters and activists have gotten AOC and a few others to call this what it is, a goddamn genocide. Um, anyway, let's play. He already, in the part I already showed, so he basically tries to get her to, uh, to like, ignore it. Thank you so much for the donation, folks. Uh, Bazalot and uh, D, you guys are heroes. I said that like I just stubbed my toe. You guys are heroes. Anyway, uh, First of all, goon Jake Tapper on CNN tries to get her to backtrack, basically, and say, like, do you really, do you really want to call this a genocide? But on top of that, he, he gives these, like, okay, we can say not enough aid is getting in. Yeah, is that what we say? Or do we say Israel is intentionally starving children to death? Not enough aid is getting in. I mean, the lightest way you could say this shit in the world is what he does. But then on top of that, you'll see he tries to get her to back out of calling it a genocide. Conditions for the Palestinian people are horrific and much more needs to be done. 
genocide. <laughs> the conditions. Sorry, I just I'll I'll play it. I'll play it in a second. But this is the bullshit you get from these apologists for genocide. Like, imagine, imagine if during the Holocaust you were a news reporter and you were saying, "Look, we can all say." Um, What's going on for certain people in the concentration camps is um, not, they're not living their best lives. Um, they, not enough food is getting in. Uh, we can say the conditions are um, not ideal. But to call this a genocide or to call this bad, is that not too much? Like, like, in, in any other circumstance, if this were any other people other than Palestinians, it, like, it, it, it's just like this guy should never be on television again. He is a morally bankrupt piece of shit. And this is like to call it. Oh, yeah, it's conditions are a little rough. Ugh, disgusting. It's repulsive. And that's your mainstream media. That's your corporate run media. It's for the Palestinian people are horrific and much more needs to be done. Genocide uh, is a word that has serious and specific uh, connotations and allegations. It's defined by the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, mm -hmm. ethnic, uh, racial, or religious group. So you, just to clarify here, you believe the Israeli military, the Israeli government are actively trying, they intend to destroy the Palestinian people and not that what's happening is horrible but it's happening because Israel is going after the terrorists of Hamas who attacked them on October 7th and Hamas embeds within the civilian population. <laughs> what a piece of shit. You're telling me that uh, Israel, when they bomb hospitals and schools endlessly and starve children to death, uh, you're telling me that wasn't to get Hamas? Do tell. Like, what, what are you talking about? You unholy piece of garbage anyway and she does she she doesn't back down to her credit uh but you know she maybe uses some lighter terms than i would but well, Jake, you're absolutely right. Um, this word is extremely serious. It's one that's taken with extraordinary gravity. And to me, the threshold of intent is a high one. It is a serious one and is not one that is made lightly. However, when we look at the precedent... Uh, and I'm going to say something she doesn't say, which you don't have to fight over the threshold of intent because we can see their intent. They've said so publicly. There are many Israelis who have said, wipe Gaza off the map. You know, they're all cockroaches. They're all animals. Uh, it turned it into a parking lot. Uh, not till all, we won't be safe until all Palestinians are gone. They've said these things publicly. Like it's in the, it's in South Africa's case in front of the, the ICJ. Like it's, anyway of what is happening with a forced famine of 1.1 million Gazans, where multiple governments, NGOs, and even officials within the United States State Department have stated themselves plainly that the Israeli government and leaders in the Israeli government are intentionally denying, blocking, and slow walking this aid in, and are precipitating a mass famine. I believe we have crossed the threshold of intent. And he looks baffled. Jake Dad was just like, oh, you're saying they do, people did this on purpose, are you? It's just, but anyway, I wanted to to give a moment to, you got to celebrate these wins, even as uh, it doesn't mean that AOC is uh, doing a wonderful job on, on all accounts, etc. But let's move on to the fact that as the U.S. abstained from that ceasefire vote, therefore allowing it to go through, a very slight, it only took them 170 days of genocide for them to abstain on a ceasefire vote. Um, they sent $30 billion to Israel. Sorry, $3.8 3 billion, not 30, but $3.8 billion to Israel. This is in addition to the tens of billions of dollars they've already sent to Israel. This is in addition, in addition to the, the arms shipments that Israel is sending every, sorry, U.S. is sending, Biden is sending every 36 hours to Israel. Uh, here's from Stephen Semler. All but two Democratic senators just voted to give Israel $3.8 billion in weapons, violating U.S. law. Uh, def defund 
a UN inquiry into Israel's violations of international law, defund UNRWA, worsening famine in Gaza. I've told, I've talked a lot about UNRWA, massive relief organization, 30,000 employees. Israel's been trying to get rid of them for years, and now they have succeeded with pure lies. They also tortured UNRWA staff, which is UN staff. Israel has tortured UN staff. They have murdered UN staff. And here's, here's the U.S. defunding that relief agency. Uh, and by the way, I also brought you the State Department spokesperson saying this the other day, that this relief agency is, is important, very important for the well-being of Palestinians. That's what they said on the podium. But at the same time, they supported defunding it. It's nonsense. It just shows that garbage is coming out of our government. The, uh, the vote also sanctioned the U.N. Human Rights Council if it highlights, uh, uh, sorry, would sanction U.N. Human Rights Council if it highlights Israeli abuses. So basically, they just voted all but two, including, De so all but two, including Democrats, all but two voted to send billions of dollars of weapons to commit genocide, to defund the, one of the largest relief agencies in the entire region, that gives 9.2 medical visits to Palestinians every year uh, and voted to basically stop the UN from looking into Israeli war crimes, Israeli atrocities. Uh, just totally egregious. Um, the funding bill would also give $500 million in missile defense cooperation, including Iron Dome, uh, a one-year ban on past, present, and future U.S. Co US contributions to UNWA, and it comes with no added political conditions. And here is a little more of what's in this budget that Congress just passed. Again, from Stephen Simler, he does uh, great work. Um. He does great work, and. He wrote about the bill, and I wanted to show you this chart, uh, a breakdown of the 2024 budget. And green shows what's been added, so has increased since the year before. And red shows what has been decreased. Well, the Pentagon has increased a lot. $27 billion added to a trillion-dollar Pentagon budget. Transportation. And housing and urban development gained 10 billion, a little bit. Energy and water gained 4 billion. Homeland security gained another billion. So keep in mind that the like trillion dollars also, because you know, you see like, oh, the Pentagon budget is 830 or 860 billion or whatever. But that doesn't include things like homeland security, which is still fucking war. It's still war and death and destruction and it doesn't include NSA or CIA or all these all these uh, initials. So that's why it's over a trillion dollars. So they just threw another billion to Homeland Security, almost an extra billion to agriculture. And then all the rest lost money from the year before. Uh, state and foreign operations, labor and education lost $13 billion. Financial services lost $14 billion. Commerce, justice, and science lost 14 billion. And you know, uh Joe Biden is uh is proud of saying and he often says uh and his spokesperson said it just yesterday in when she was sitting at the podium. She said uh that Joe Biden loves to say don't tell me what a man values, show me the budget and I'll tell you what he values. Basically, show me where his money goes and I'll tell you what he values. Well, this is where Biden's money is going. This is where the U.S. government money is going. Huge increase to the Pentagon, to war, to endless war, death, and destruction. Huge increase of billions of dollars of weapons to Israel. Huge decrease in commerce, justice, and science. It, huge decrease in labor and education and health services. So going by Biden's own rubric of how to decide what a man, what a person values, Clearly, we value war, death, and destruction. We do not value workers, health, education, science. I know that comes as a shock, but this is by Biden's own measure, right? Biden told us to look at what, where the budget goes. I'll tell you what you value. By Biden's own measure.
That's what you have. Uh, okay, one more note on this. Well, a couple more notes but uh, on this uh, gen- genocide. But uh, I am going to go over to rumble.com slash Lee Camp in just a minute. I have an update on Boeing. Boeing, by the way, their their whistleblower that they have several lawsuits against, uh, worked at Boeing for years and years and said that their planes are uh, dangerous. Um, that whistleblower was found dead in his car in the, the middle, uh, in between days of giving testimony against Boeing. I brought you that story the other day. I have an update on that, a new update on that on Boeing. That's coming up as well as much more. Rumble.com slash Lee Camp. That's rumble.com slash Lee Camp. Go over to rumble.com slash Lee Camp. It's free to watch there. You can also watch on my locals page. If you feel like you've gotten even 38 cents, just 38 cents, that's it out of this episode. Join up at leecamp.net. That'll take you to my locals page. Leecamp.net. Locals is like Patreon, except it's better. It has uh, f- more features like Facebook, etc. So leecamp.net. Go over to my uh, locals page and uh, join up. Scroll down to become a member. Uh, sorry, become a subscriber. Don't click become a member. That's the free version, but uh, go down to become a subscriber. And you will support this show. You will make this show possible. And it's 38 cents, 38 cents an episode. Come on, man. Come on, ladies. Come on, men and ladies, men and people and folks. Come on. Uh, 38 cents. Join up over at leecamp.net. If you forget that, you can always go to my link tree, which is on screen right now. And that has all my links. And we'll show you how to become a member or we'll take you there and scroll down to become a supporter. Okay, but free to watch right now, rumble.com slash Lee Camp. So I'm about to bring you a tweet by Alex Jones that shows Alex Jones, the maniac himself, is less right wing than Joe Biden. He's less right wing than our entire Congress. That's coming up in just a second. Good old Alex. It's 